Well, folks, this is uh, part two and three of what's happened in the Avery case up until Zellner files what she's going to file earlier or later on today, being 126, 2023. Part one was just a rendition of everything that's taken place and her pointing the two individuals that came forward after Stephen Avery was convicted that would have benefited him had things not been hidden. Ramble talking to the officer, no report of that done. And the paper boy's information, which was passed on to a detective, but ignored. Uh, this is just going over everything that's happened in this case from 130.07 all the way up until 10, 23.17. And then we got part three, which goes from 2.27, or no, 130.07, all the way up until 10, 23.2017. This is all information that's already out there. It's nothing new, which he files tomorrow or later on today is her motion. So again, I left links. So if you want to read this stuff yourself, feel free. But this, just look over some of it. Decision order, admissibility, transcript, ever convicted, post conviction relief, Wisconsin Supreme Court, denies petition for review. Uh, Mrs. Quincy affidavits, transcript, opening statement, section of Bobby Dassey's testimony, jury question requesting Bobby Dassey's testimony, search warrants for Dassey's computer, interview with Bobby Dassey by John and Deering. Uh, let's go take a look at that. <laughs> Gotta find it first. All right, here we go. She left the shower to go do hunting, bow hunting. About 15 minutes later, you were going to hear Bobby that when he left 15 minutes later, Teresa Duffy was there, and Patricia was nowhere to be found. You are going to hear that Bobby Dassey was the last person, the last citizen that will have seen Teresa walk alive. You are going to hear from other citizens like that, the people that will help place this case into context for us. Juries are true as a fact. You don't decide what the law is, the judge does that, but you decide what the facts of the case are, and the facts in this case aren't just going to point to it, who did it, it's not just who done it case, it's just happened, where it happened, and when it happened. But we're also going to provide you evidence that not just Stephen Avery did it, but to exclusion of other people as well, in other words, positive evidence about two, who done it, not only it, but also negative evidence of what that necessarily excludes others and to get to find those facts in the end of this case. You understand where some of the these evidence or some of this evidence found. Finally, the kind of witnesses that you are going to hear from include citizens and law enforcement officers or records kind of people, although most of those will be agreed to between Mr. Strang and us, as well as expert witnesses. Bobby Assey saw this young girl later had to find a street saw back out of her shield or blue or green colored SUV 99, 98, 97, 94 actually taking pictures of the van that her mom had that her mom had for sale let me read that again Bobby Dassey identified Teresa Halbach get out of her teal or blue or green color SUV and actually take pictures of the van that her mom had for sale. His mom, not her. Bobby Dassey is going to tell you that after looking out the window after seeing Teresa Halbach take these photographs of the vehicle and finish her job, that Teresa walked towards Stephen Avery's trailer. We also hear evidence that she was walking towards the main entrance of Stephen Avery's trailer and that Bobby thereafter took a shower and left to go deer hunting. Bow hunting about 15 minutes later. You're going to hear from Bobby that he left 15 minutes later. Their SUV still there and Teresa was nowhere to be found. 
you go and you hear that, that Bobby Dassey was the last person, the last citizen that will be seen to so long alive. You're going to hear from other citizens uh, just the same thing over and over. Uh, <coughs> uh, I was up at 2.30, yeah. At 2.30, did you see something? Yes, what did you see? I seen a vehicle pull up on our driveway. Do you recall which window you were looking from? To the front window in front of the kitchen table. Bobby, could you describe the vehicle from the jury, please? It was a light green SUV, like a teal color. Do you know that it was 2.30 in the afternoon because I was going to hunting that night? So that was the time I wanted to get up. I got up at 2. All right, but from which did you blue or teal drive in as you were looking out the window toward the west? It would be, can you tell the jury, please, which from the direction of Uncle Trailer is this house? The west. Do you know what that kind of SUV it was? At the time, all right, after seeing that vehicle driving up the roadway, I tell the jury what you saw then. But when you talk to Dennis Jacobs on the 5th of November, he describes it as a CRV, Honda CRV, green. I seen Teresa Hallbach get out of the vehicle, start taking pictures. What was it? taking pictures of? A maroon van. A what? A maroon van. Can you tell us what the vehicle? What was it? Where it was parked? It was parked right in front of our house. Uh, you told the story. It was Teresa Hallbach that had taken the pictures. How do you know that? Now I know that at the time I didn't. What did this, this woman look like? She was about maybe five feet eight. She had about brown hair, short hair, lean hair. She had a black coat on that was went past her hips. Was she wearing pants or a skirt? She was wearing pants. So now there's a van. What can you tell the jury about the van? It was a 1989 Plymouth Voyager. It had lots of miles on it. It was my mom's van. She had it for a couple of years. I don't really know much more about it. All right, you were looking out the window and you said that you saw some woman taking pictures. Can you describe those, please? Well, I seen her take one picture of the front of the van. Then I went in and took a shower. Okay, after seeing her taking some pictures, did you see her do anything else? She started, she started before I got in the shower, she started actually walking over to Stevens trailer. You can see that from your location next to the window, yeah. You said walking towards Stevens trailer. What does that mean? She walked toward it. To the door. How close to the door did she get before you stopped watching? Maybe twenty five yards. You see her enter your uncle's trailer? No, why not? Because I want wanted to take a shower. I didn't pay no attention to it. Alright, that was our number her <coughs> was there anybody with her at the time? Uh, was there anybody outside or making contact with her outside of the vehicle? No. After seeing this woman to walk in towards your Uncle Steven Shetter, did you ever see that woman again? No. How long was it you were in the shower? Do you remember? Maybe three minutes or four minutes? Okay. What do you do then? Got dressed and left to go hunting. Now, when you left to go hunting, did you have a vehicle on the premises? Yes. Can you tell the jury what kind of vehicle it was? A black Chevy Blazer. Where was it parked? It was parked right between the house and the garage about the time you think you left to go hunting, probably 20, 20 to 3, quarter to 3, quarter to 3. Bobby, how do you know what time it was? Well, why is it the time important as it? Yeah. So, then we got... Response request to transcript is recorded. You will look at the copy written transcript of the testimony available for the deliberation. This specific portion of the testimony to read you. You will continue. Blah, 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 blah. Can we please or hear a transcript of Bobby Dassey's testimony? Thank you. Uh, we got a search warrant. Thomas Fassbender, April 21st. Bound out. This is for the hard drive for the computer. Uh, this is the information obtained from their computer analysis. 1,625 additional images categorized as recovered pornography. 2,632 search results for terms. Blood one, DNA three, fire, blah, 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 documents, negro for life, chat logs, MSN chats, do, 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 information containing CDs derived from 
Forensic Image Botanical on DVD, a child defense counsel does not provide critical information, including the criteria used by Detective Vili in performing forensic computer examination, as well as the results of the examination. This is just her putting everything that's happened up until when she files her newest motion. On the 26th, later on today, uh, Brian Dassey's Kelly McCowney interview, John Dietering, half a day for Gary Hunt. Search terms, big things in, big things in, big women naked, huge dildo, huge dildo, huge dildo, searching, stretching, women, slut using, extreme toys, extreme toy, extreme toys, uh, accident, car accident, fax accident, fast car accident, Ford Empo car accident, Ford Tempo accident. Race car accident. Seeing bones, hot girls, car accidents, a live skeleton, skeleton, skeleton. Dra drowned girls, drowned girls, drowned girls, deceased, diseased, deceased, rotten. Some pretty uh, disturbing key lookups. Uh, Bobby's younger brother Blaine, Brennan, Bobby, mother at work, brother Brian, longer lived. Tommy on they moved out October 15th. Based on Mr. Finding 667 sexual images search were performed on weekdays between 6 and 345. Of those searches, 562 were performed on 10 weekdays. 816, 913, 223, 329, 330, 4306, 4606, and yeah. So these 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 searches continued after Stephen Avery's arrested and after Brendan Dassey's arrested. So it, you know it's not them two doing it. Okay, this is Bobby. I worked at Fisher Hamilton. What time do you start work on a day? I was started at 10 at night and worked till 6 in the morning. October 31st, 2005, could you tell the jury where you were during the daytime hours? Yes, I was. How late? I was long work at home until, home until 2.30 that day. Where did you go? What were you doing before 2.30? I was sleeping. But we have computer records that show that somebody was accessing Bobby Dassey's computer in his bedroom while he was sleeping. Did he have a friend over? I mean, we got Brendan Dassey in 2004 stating that Mike and Bobby hang out every day. They go goose hunting. And then we got November 6th interview. He says the same thing. They go hunting every day. They go hunting for a goose. But this time he says in the quarry. But none of this is new information. It's everything she's always... Put in all of her briefs, even to the Court of Appeals. Then we got Brendan and Wiegert's interview from March 1st. 
And then, like we had talked about before, so I told him, do you remember that day? Yeah. I got off the bus at 345, walked the same jeep down by our house, and I went into my house and played PlayStation 2 for two hours, three hours, I ate, ate. Got a phone from Steven, a phone call from Steven, and asked if he wanted to go to the bonfire. Next to that, his garage, and said he had a da 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 da. November 7th, approximately. Deb Strauss interviewed Blaine Dassey at 1011. So this is after she leaves the Avery property because Deb Strauss signs in right before Ryan Hilgis and Scott Bloor arrive. They're there for about an hour. After they sign out, she signs out. So then I guess she wants to go talk to Blaine. CDs and these are the things that were on it. More sexual searches. And these are happening after Stephen and Brennan are incarcerated. These are from April. Three twenty-eight, two thousand six. Number six, Klemensky, Deb Charles talked to Brian Dassey. Remember, Deb Charles calls on the night of November fourth. Saying she's got history with Avery, and she's got dirt on him, and she was uh, Peg Lobsauter's investigator that investigated the wrongful conviction of Stephen Avery, and based on her and Amy Lehman's report, they deemed it was the victim's fault for identifying the wrong suspect, but. Gregory Allen was never shown to her, so how could she identify the wrong person? We have Manitowoc PD telling the sheriff they got the wrong person. Penny getting harassing phone calls after Stephen's arrested, and they ignore it all. 18 plus alibi witnesses, receipt stating he's nowhere near where the assault took place, and they still convicted him. Too many coincidences, no matter which individual you look at, in the law enforcement side or just in general. <clears throat> A tape of five stories in every case, he robbed copies, tapes of telephone calls from Strums to Sheriff. This is just evidence, white binder containing photographs, black binder containing document diagrams. They made interview a lot of foreign officers in the case. I said, do remember an interview on February 6, 2006. Austin Jackson. Johnson, do you remember telling law enforcement officers that you may, you must have seen, do you remember just prior to October 31st? Well, this is them talking to Rowley Johnson about the cut on his finger, which was obtained from him removing sheet metal from the flatbed up in Cribbits, or placing it or removing it. That's when he originally cut himself open, and he kept reopening it up again, reopened it on November 3rd, removing the trailer hitch from the 
snowmobile trailer. We bled on the uh, Robert Fabian. Yeah, it was a burning brush. If you listen to the October 30th phone call between Jody and Steven, he references bringing the Suzuki home along with his snowmobile and also talks about the brush. And if you look in photos we have from Wisconsin State Patrol, there's still a pile of brush in the field in between Cuss Road and Avery's. And there's multiple reports of them being fires on multiple nights now. Because uh, if you read the DCI reports, the case reports of people, uh, they got Mike Osmondson saying there, he heard there was a fire there on the 1st or the 2nd and 31st. He was burning the brush. The van seat was born on a previous night. He burned a coffee table that was Tom Yonda's that got rained on and Barb was mad because she was going to attach it in the garage to the wall I guess to use it as like a shelf or some sort but Brendan and Steven snatched it up and burned it along with the tires and the brush and I'm pretty sure he burns a little bit of some garbage too why not but that's uh, part three. So uh, until we get the new filing, uh, it's just everything is taking place. Phone records from Bobby Gassi. And Bobby Dassey does call the Manitowoc Sheriff's Department on the 4th. And it's involving the deer that was tagged when he went to the, the gas station right by Zipper's house. But it's part one, part two. It's nothing new. It's just uh, her going over everything. And she will be filing her motion today. So. See y'all next time.